right, so we're going to get started, and I was going to start seated, but because it is chilly, is anybody freezing to death? Okay. Um, since I forgot to layer today, I may slow it down. We're going to start, as usual, just by kind of moving the body, moving the connective tissue, just kind of jiggling in place, just to warm the body up or the when we stretch, it used to be you were supposed to stretch before you exercise, and now they say you're supposed to stretch after. Well, you know, sometimes I do it either or. So, because I'm not sure which is really right. It's sort of like, well, this food is not good for you, and then they come back and say, oh, it is good for you. So who knows? All right. So after we finish doing this, we're gonna place our feet about hip bone width apart. And together, if we want more challenge, and find Tadasana. So we're going to roll those shoulders back. So that when we stop, the shoulders are spread, they're open, and the hands are by our side seams. We're going to imagine growing tall from the crown of the head, tucking the chin back. If you're comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. If you're not comfortable with eyes closed, just keep them open and just maybe half mass, find a neutral place to stare at the floor. Think about the ears being over the shoulders. Maybe firm up the thighs. Pull, if you're like me, and sway back. We wanna pull the lower abdomen in. Good posture. And just begin to notice the body, feel, feel what you feel without judgment. Um, <clears throat> noticing the feet, uh, what parts of the feet are connected to the ground. Maybe you're feeling four points, or maybe you're feeling a uh, triangle shape. The two points, the two edges of the balls of the foot, and maybe the middle of the heel towards the end, or four points being both sides of the edge of the heel. And bringing awareness to the nostrils. And just seeing if you can feel the inhale and the exhale without changing it. Without changing your breath, just the effortless breath. For many, it's the tip of the nostrils where we feel it. Maybe it's the back of the throat. And perhaps you might feel some movement in the torso, the chest and the belly. Whenever you're ready, I invite you, we're gonna break the breath into two parts. So we're gonna inhale halfway. We're gonna be lengthening the breath. We inhale halfway. It's like we're bringing that breath up and all the way, all the way up to our collarbones. And then we're going to exhale halfway through the nose or through the mouth if you're congested. And the rest of the way through the nose. And you'll find that the lower abdomen um, grabs in and the ribs grab in on that exhale. We inhale halfway. Things begin to expand in the torso, belly and ribs as we bring it all the way up to the collarbones. And as we exhale, maybe feeling the ribs collapse back down and drawing in that lower abdomen. There's a little pause there before we inhale again. We'll do this one more time. And then I invite you to open your eyes slowly. Oh yeah. So we're gonna start with some simple movements. <clears throat> when our hands or our palms are facing backwards, our chin's gonna be to the chest. As we inhale, we're gonna gaze up and move the chin upwards and move the palms forward. And as we exhale, we're gonna drop those palms to the back and we'll just keep moving at our own pace. Maybe coming up or just staying down by the hips. 
depending upon your body today, maybe if the shoulders hurt, you're gonna keep it closer, the hands closer to the hips. If not, maybe progressively moving up. And just feeling when we're looking up, feeling those shoulder blades coming together like they were kissing the spine. Finding that pause at the end of the exhale. These are deeper breaths. We're moving with the breath. Everybody may have a different breath pace today. So we're trying to compare ourselves to others. I would recommend that you just let that go and follow your own breath. One more time. Bring the head back to neutral. And we're gonna step wide. We're gonna keep the toes to the front, the heels directly behind. And we're gonna do a different variation of um, triangle pose. So we're gonna roll the shoulders down if we can, arms out. If the shoulders hurt, you can always do teacup arms. We'll take an inhale, nice and comfortable, deeper than usual. Exhale and tip over to the side. And when we're ready, we inhale up. I like to pause at the top of the inhale. You don't have to. Exhale down the other side, maybe find a pause. Feel the stretch on the inside of that leg. Inhale back up and we're gonna go cross body. Exhale down, maybe reach for the far edge if that's available to you <clears throat> of the leg. If it's the neck, you can look straight out or you can look up towards the hand that's not available to me today. We don't push it, we inhale back up. Exhale, we're gonna to go to the other side. And inhale back up. You don't like my breath count, do it your own way. Exhale down for me, inhale up. As long as you're moving with the breath, following your own breath pace. And a longer than normal, if it's available to you, breath. Feeling a nice stretch on the inside of the legs. It's gonna be the opposite as we're going down. And we'll do it one more time, both sides and go down once we have finished going side to side. And we'll release that. We're gonna bring the heels in. So now our, our feet are at a diagonal. Gonna bring our hands uh, together and uh, it's called the Anjali Mudra, uh, prayer hands. And we're just gonna pretend like we're carousel horses. We're gonna warm up the insides of our legs. I'm listening to this music. I'm sorry, virtual students, welcome, but you probably can't hear my music, but it's kind of nice. I hope the guys in the back. Oh yeah, see, she's doing it too. We can play with this. Yoga doesn't have to be perfect. We play, we, can, we do what feels good, yes. Okay, so then we're gonna bring those arms up. We're gonna take an inhale here, and as we exhale, one arm's gonna come to the front, and one arm to the back. We'll inhale back up, straighten the leg. We're gonna switch arms. Whichever arm is in front is the direction that we're in. Getting a little neck motion in here. Little twist. Another little twist when we were doing, <laughs> I can't talk and do this. What's wrong with me today? It's my normal. Gotten to where I have to focus on one thing at a time. That's very mindful, by the way. I don't try to. And then I'm going to find a stopping place and bring my hands to my sides. 
<clears throat> in this class, we honor our body. We do what feels good. And if it doesn't feel good, we don't do it. We either modify, <clears throat> find a modification, or simply close our eyes and rest and just feel the breath coming in and out through the nose. <clears throat> so for the next one, <clears throat> We're going to have a star pose. So star pose is arms out. And again, if that doesn't work for you today, you can always do the hips, star pose. And this time when we <clears throat> exhale down, our glutes, our buttocks are going to go back. Okay, when we come into squat, buttocks go back, we go, ha, we stick out our tongue, cross our eyes, inhale back to star. Exhale, ha, bring those elbows back. Cross the eyes. And one more time. That's a lion face. And release those. We're going to bring the toes to the front and then take a break, shake it out, bounce if that feels better. So I'm going to do a little work on a, a little play. I should say the word work. One of those four letter words. Play is a much better four letter word. We're gonna find <clears throat> mountain pose again, Tadasana with the feet about hip width apart. And again, if you wanna challenge your balance, you can put them together. If your mat is thick <clears throat> and you're feeling like you're wobbling, just step off the mat. We're not gonna do a balance pose yet. We're just gonna do some more stretching and I'm gonna inhale up and act like I'm pushing the ceiling up as as I'm stretching this side of the body, I'm pressing down with my other hand, maybe spreading the fingers. You can wiggle them if you want. And then I'm gonna switch. Inhale up and I'm looking down at the hands and pressing down. So I'm getting a little neck movement too. I'm gonna to follow my breath. Inhale up, maybe pause at the top or not. Exhale, down. One more, other side. And relax. Let's go ahead and roll those shoulders and move those knees, find some ease. I like to roll shoulders back rather than forward because um, most of us have a forward shoulder from computer work, looking at our phones, reading, whatever it is we do, we tend to do it with our shoulders forward. So back is important to me. If you're in other classes, they may move it both ways. I'm like, no need. I do it naturally this way. So why roll it that way? So just going to um, expound on what we were doing, the uh, stretching out the side body. I'm going to inhale my arms up and Grab opposite elbows, so I've made a nice little frame. Maybe rest it on the side of my face. Taking a nice inhale when I'm ready, I'm gonna exhale. And again, I'm not gonna collapse. I'm gonna keep integrity on the short side of my body as I stretch out all these muscles, helping myself to breathe better. Taking a breath or two here. If you've gone too far, you just simply move it up a little bit. If you're gritting your teeth, you've gone too far. Inhale up and let's exhale other side. And take a breath or two, you know if you've gone too far again. If it hurts, you have to move it up. Again, if this hurts, you can do it this way with the arms, teacup arms. <clears throat> I like to make, um, my yoga class inclusive of everyone. And you can also do this from the chair. We'll inhale back up and release. Roll those shoulders. We can actually put our fingertips on our shoulders and make chicken wings, which is another modification for people that have shoulder issues. Okay, so for some balance poses, and again, if your mat is thick, you will probably want to uh, step off your mat and get yourself grounded on the floor. I'm going to 
try something and we're going to see if we can. I like to have my arms out for balance. We're going to tuck that chin in, grow tall, find a, a drizzy, a focal point, and not another person. I'm going to go ahead and bring the leg up. I feel like I'm falling. I just simply put the foot down again. I'm going to move it forward and then out to the side and then back up and then down. Good job. The fact that no one fell is excellent. So some people prefer to keep the arms out closer to the ground for balance. Some people may need, I have a chair for everybody since the floor is concrete. concrete. So if you feel free to grab onto the chair. So we're gonna try this on the other side. We're gonna shift all of our weight to the side we um, just fit, just worked, just played with. We're going to bring it up like we're bringing the knee towards the torso and bring it forward and bring it out and in and down. Did anybody notice the difference? One side. Yes. Yes. That's because that just reminds us why we need to practice yoga because yoga helps balance the body and we tend to favor one side over the other. So I'm gonna work on balance one more time before we come down to the ground. And we're gonna go into a chair pose. And again, in a chair pose, just like when we were doing that um, lion face, the glutes are gonna go out. We're still got a nice long straight back. We're gonna inhale up. We're gonna find that drizzy point, that focal point, exhale down. And then we're gonna do a very gentle twist to the side. So the elbow of is going to be on the, either the first thigh or if the body allows a cross. Let's hang here for a second. Make sure we're stable and balanced. Then we're going to rotate and come up and back down flat foot. Exhale into chair. We're going to rotate again to the other side. Looking out to the side. And again, the elbow may be placed on the front leg, the first, first thigh you can reach or all the way to the other side, if the body allows. But then trying to keep those hands at the heart center. So I can go to the other thigh, but the hands just go elsewhere. So whatever push it. Back to the center, we're going to inhale up and exhale down. Shake it out. Let it go. I just realized I don't have a. Uh... Okay, I'm warming up. Anybody else feeling the warmth in their bodies? Yeah, getting hot, getting warm. Don't even need my gloves anymore. Nobody's getting warm. <sighs> Maybe it's just me. I call them power surges. <clears throat> So I'm gonna um, come to the top third of my mat. I'm gonna inhale these arms up. And as I exhale, I'm gonna pretend like I'm swan diving down. I'm gonna grab my legs and bend my knees. I'm gonna fold over my torso and grab opposite elbows and just stretch out that low back. If you don't have problems with dizziness, you, you can drop the crown of the head towards the floor. If you do, please keep the chin up. We'll just stay here. If you feel like you're, you're beginning to get dizzy, just simply put the um, hands down on the mat. So now hands on the mat. We're gonna step back with one foot and we're on the ball of our foot. When we step back with the other, we're gonna go into a plank pose. A modification for anybody who is having trouble with arm strength today is to simply drop the knees to the floor. For the rest of us, I like to roll up on my toes too, just, just give them a nice stretch, don't have to do it. In plank pose, I prefer to have the buttocks up a little higher rather than even where they might sag because that puts too much weight on the low back and we don't wanna hurt our low backs. So from here, we're gonna go into a pigeon pose, a sleeping pigeon. For those that don't like pigeon, 
There's many other ways to do it. I will demonstrate after I get the class going. So I'm going to bring my knee to the outside of my, whatever knee's bent, outside of the wrist of the hand that's in front. And I'm going to take the other leg and move it back, straight back. And if I realize, oh, this hurts already, this is not fun, and I'm starting to list to one side, I'm simply going to take that heel and move it more towards my groin. If it's not enough stretch, I'm gonna move the foot more forward. Then if the body allows, I'll come down to my forearms. I can make two fists to rest my head on those two fists, or if the body allows, it would be forehead to the floor. So this is one way to do pigeon. For those that are able to do this and feel okay in this, Continue to rest and breathe, keeping the hips level if at all possible. For those that don't like this form of pigeon, there's another way to do it, and that is on your back. And for some people, just having one ankle on the opposite thigh, near the knee, but not on the knee, that's enough. For others, they may want to go deeper, and you can do it on your back by lifting the, the other foot that's on the ground, lifting it up and very gently pulling in that back leg, using maybe your elbow against the front leg, keeping a, a flex in the foot. So that's another way of doing it. So I've left those of you who are in sleeping pigeon down here for a while. So you've had an opportunity to allow the body to this is good for the piriformis to help it stretch out. So for those that are down here, or if you, you're on your back and you, you're ready to unwind, you can do that. For those of us on the ground, we're gonna take our hands under our chest, come into table, and then stretch one foot out. And then the other, we're going into plank pose once more, and we're going to do pigeon on the other side. So I'm bringing my knee to the outside edge. That My lower leg is at a diagonal. So for me, that works. If you need more, of course, you can move that foot higher up. So <clears throat> that doesn't work for me, so I'm coming back to my diagonal. And again, I'm just going to rest. I'm going to try to keep those hips level. Maybe lengthen the exhale. If you're not sure that you've lengthened the exhale, you can count your inhale and make the exhale longer, or you can just feel it. As you're lengthening the exhale, maybe with the eyes closed, I encourage closed eyes when you know where we're going. I invite you to envision sending that exhale to the area of greatest sensation, not pain, but sensation. If there's pain, again, you just modify and bring that heel closer to the groin. This is really good for those of us who are uh, very athletic, like the runners, uh, power walkers, to get really tight in the piriformis muscle, which runs from your hip over to the tailbone, runs um, perpendicular to the sciatic nerve that runs down the middle of the glutes all the way down to the heel. And if it gets tight, if at any point in time you need to come out of a pose early, forgot to remind everybody, just do it. Honor your body. On our next inhale, we'll come up. You are on your back as your choice of a modification, you'll unwind. I'm going to come into table and we're going to do a cat cow. I'm sorry. I don't want to turn my, I don't mean to fix my glutes at you, but if I turn this way, then I'm facing them at the camera. So doing my best. So let's have our hands underneath our shoulders and let's see if we can spread the fingers wide and put a little tension in the fingertips. It takes it off of the wrist. If that hurts, you make fists. If that hurts, you come down to the forearm. So there's many ways to deal with this. We're gonna imagine 
pushing the chest forward. So we're pushing the chest forward, maybe gazing upward. And what's happening is we're creating a back bend. And that is a cow. Cat is send to chest, you draw in the lower abdomen, you hunch to the back the other way. So it's like an upside down U. For those who have osteoporosis of the spine and need to keep the spine neutral, just keep the spine neutral. As you come down, draw the chin to the chest, draw the lower abdomen in, and we're gonna come into child's pose. We're gonna flow with this. We're gonna inhale up. And I'm not gonna do cat, I'm gonna do chakravasana. So this time I'm not gonna arch my back the other way, I'm gonna show that neutral. So I'm coming down onto my forearms, dropping my chin to my chest, drawing in my lower abdomen and coming into child's pose. We're gonna do this a couple of more times or not, or not means you get to choose. One more time. So we're in child's pose and for some people, they need a wider leg and that's okay too. You bring big toes together instead of the knees parallel to each other. Any way that feels best for you. We're gonna do something else this time. We're gonna turn our head. I'm gonna suggest you turn your head to the left, nose to the left and take that left arm and bring it around to the back with the palm up reaching as far over as comfortable, maybe to the opposite hip. As we inhale, we're gonna be going into a <clears throat> thunderbolt pose. We're gonna inhale up, we're gonna turn the head center, bring the arm around and come all the way up. As we come down, we're not gonna pitch forward and go fast. We're gonna bring those glutes back and we're gonna turn our head the other way and take that arm to the far side, palm up. And when you're ready to inhale, we bring the head to the center, bring the arm to the front. We come up, make sure that the shoulders haven't come up to the ears. Try to keep those shoulders down. Exhale, we'll do this one more time. Everybody should be very warm in this building and I'm really regretting that I don't have a layer under this heavy sweater. One more time, we'll inhale up and we'll go to the other side. I'm gonna balance that body. Inhale up and come down to table. We're gonna move those legs out to the side, come down onto our glutes. And we're gonna work our way onto our back. Ah. You can say ah. When you open your mouth as you exhale in yoga, it's called a cleansing breath. It's also very soothing to the nervous system. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and bring our arms alongside the body nice and long and the palms on the mat. If anybody notices that they've got excess curvature in the neck, we wanna go ahead and drop that chin. You can either drop it or you can just roll the head in a very gentle, exaggerated no, and that tucks that chin back, gives you more length in the neck. Because we're gonna be doing some core work. I'm gonna take a nice inhale. When I exhale, I'm gonna bring my um, lower legs up and my feet up so that it looks like I've fallen over completely backwards sitting in a, um, straight back chair. I'm gonna drop one toe to the ground and then inhale it up. Exhale, drop the other toe, inhale it up. I'm gonna go from side to side. I'm gonna try to keep that low back 
more or less flatten towards the mat. That really engages your core. So if at any time you feel like you've had enough and I'm still doing this, stop and rest please on your body. So I'm consciously thinking of not extending the curve in my low lumbar, trying to keep it closer to the mat, less curvature, so that I engage more of my core muscles. And the core actually starts about an inch below the belly button, which is why I often say, Lower abdomen, engage your lower abdomen. Some people say belly button to spine. It's all about the same. I'm just making you aware of where it's located. Last one. We're gonna bring both legs in towards the chest. So you may grab behind the thighs. We're gonna separate those thighs and I just realized I got the camera looking at me, so I'm gonna turn just a bit. We're gonna go into happy baby. For those that don't know what happy baby is, the legs are wide, we raise our lower legs, flex the toes, we can still just grab behind the knees, or we can extend the arms inside and grab the lower legs, or, well, I can't do it, I got shoes on got my yoga shoes on, you can take two fingers and grab it around your big toe or fingertips to the outer edge of the feet. The idea, it's an inversion pose, is to give the heart a break. And I noticed I had excess curvature in my neck, so I went ahead and go, pulled my chin in. You can also rock side to side if that feels good. There's no perfect way. That's why yoga is called a practice instead of yoga perfect. If you get the yoga journal, you'll see a lot of young people. I used to do the same thing, doing headstands, doing major donuts, major twists and contortions. But as we get older, we honor our bodies and we do what's best for our bodies right now always welcome to do more if that feels best for you. We're gonna go ahead and release however we've held those legs up, bring those knees together. Maybe a hand on each shin or you can bring the hands behind the thighs. I'm gonna bring the, this is called apanasana, or wind relieving pose. And again, if you want, you can Shift your body weight side to side. Massaging the back, massaging the hips. Finding neutral. We're gonna place one foot and then the other foot down on the mat. We're gonna go ahead and stretch the legs out. Whew, my pants, I got high waters. Put my pants down. And we're gonna go into a simple twist. And again, if anybody's been advised not to twist, if you have uh, serious low back problems that aren't being resolved right now, you may want to just keep this very simple. I'm gonna take a nice, comfortably deep inhale, feel the ribs expanded in all directions, front, sides, and back. I'm gonna exhale and bring my right knee in towards my chest. I'm gonna take the right hand just below the kneecap, and I'm gonna take my left hand out from my shoulder and T. I'm gonna very gently let that bent knee slide off to the side and turn my head the other way. And just kind of let it hang out here. If it hurts, don't bring it out as far. You'll know what's best for you. No pain, all gain in yoga. 
We want this to be a lifetime practice and not have it cut short by injury. And on our next inhale, we're gonna rotate, roll that head back to center, bring that knee back to center. And we're gonna switch hands. So I'm gonna take my left hand to my right knee, take the right hand out, and then very gently pull my bent knee to the left side as I roll my head to the right. I've got my right arm extended out from the shoulder, a half T. I don't push it. You need more, you can take the hand even further over the leg and press, but for me, I prefer to just let my knee go where it wants to go naturally. So it's a very gentle twist because I have <clears throat> six screws and two rods in my lower lumbar. So even the teacher modifies. Next inhale, we'll roll the head back to center, that bent knee back to center. We'll release it, let it come out straight. Inhale and bend the other knee. Exhale it in to your chest. For me, it's my left knee. If you're challenged on directions, just do the other leg. Take the arm that's on that side. For me, it's my left arm. I'm gonna place it below my kneecap. I try not to ever grab onto the knee itself with a lot of force. I'm gonna take it out to the side as I exhale and turn my head the other way. For some of us, you may be able to get our elbow down to the floor. You may need to put the heel down to the floor. I wouldn't let it hang out in space. And on our next inhale, we're gonna roll the head back to center, bring that bent knee back to center as well. We're gonna release the hand hold and switch hands. Take the hand that was holding the knee out into T position and rock that bent knee over towards the other side. Let the head roll opposite. Just kind of hang out here, hanging out where you're comfortable. I actually let my heel drop down to my thigh. Some people like their whole foot. Some people prefer to grab up above the knee at the thigh level. I like to keep it below the kneecap so I don't go too far. So we make it our own practice. And we breathe with a soft face. Roll the head back to center. Roll that bent knee back to center. We're gonna place that foot on the ground and we're gonna bend the other leg and put that foot on the ground. So we've got both knees are bent, feet are about hip bone width apart if we were to draw a line. You just gotta kind of feel it. Do one more stretch before final relaxation. Taking a nice, comfortably deep inhale, feeling the torso expand as the ribs and maybe perhaps the belly expands, maybe subtle. Exhale, we're going to bring the right knee in towards the chest. We're going to grab behind the thigh. We're going to extend that leg and flex the foot. You will feel your hamstring stretch. If you have a strap, that's another tool you can use. The only caution I advise with a strap is that you don't get too loosey-goosey with it and overstretch. You don't want to pull a hamstring, very, very painful. That's why I like to use my hands instead. At home, I'll use a strap, but usually not in class. I want to keep this other bent knee in place and firm. Don't let it just kind of hang out to the side. Or if the back allows, we can straighten out 
nut bent knee. And again, for those that have low back problems, a bent knee is easier on the low back. If you do straighten it out, flex that foot so the heel's going towards the bottom of the mat. And then let's point and flex the foot that's raised towards the ceiling. And maybe turn the foot either way so the arch is facing one way and then facing the other and then maybe draw a little circle. A little baseball on the ceiling here, and then maybe reverse. Exhale, bend that knee in towards the chest in single wind relieving pose, and then place that foot on the ground. Close your eyes for a moment, just Check in with the body, notice how it feels. Next inhale, we're gonna bend the other knee. We'll exhale it into our chest. We can keep the right knee bent with the foot on the ground if our back is sensitive today or we can extend it out long with a flexed foot. We're gonna extend that bent knee at the chest. We're gonna extend that leg up to the ceiling. We're gonna flex the foot, toes towards the knee so that we feel the hamstring stretch. Breathing for a moment or two, allowing it the time to kind of release and then maybe a point and flex of the foot. And then maybe turning the arch one direction, then the other, one direction, then the other, like a windshield wiper. And maybe circling that foot around the ankle and circling the other way. Pausing in neutral with the leg extended up towards the ceiling on our next exhale, we'll bend that knee, bring it in towards our chest. Bring the foot to the ground and prepare for final relaxation. If anybody has a cranky back, you can modify with bent knees, we bring the feet a little wider, we let the knees touch each other so that they can rest or we extend the legs out long. We bring the arms typically away from the body so we can flatten the shoulder blades on the mat with the palms up. Some people like to bend at the elbows, placing energy filled hands, feeling energy on the belly torso, or if you have a chair, you may choose to do a modification of legs up the wall. With a chair, you just put your feet, put your knees up against the edge of the chair and rest like with your back on the ground. Some people like to put a blanket underneath their low back. For those of us on the colder floor, if you want and have an extra blanket, you may want to choose to blanket yourself or put your coat over yourself. This is your time to rest and allow the body to integrate the earlier movements. This is our time to let go. Bringing awareness to the closed eyes and feeling all the muscles around the eyes relaxing, muscles behind the eyes relaxing. And then letting our awareness travel up to the forehead, our focus on the forehead, feeling it go loose and lax.
taking our attention down to both cheeks, feeling them soften as if they were sliding off the sides of the face. Noticing our jaw, we help it to relax by separating the teeth slightly, lips either lightly together or slightly apart. Noticing perhaps where our tongue is, if it's glued to the roof of the mouth, it holds extra tension. I invite you, if you want, it's your choice, to let it go and let it float to the bottom. Bringing awareness to the nostrils, inhaling without effort. This is an effortless inhale, just feeling the inhale in through the nose. And imagine it out through the feet. Send that breath out through the feet. In through the nose, out through the feet. Breath. Just the breath. Becoming aware of the inhale through the nose. Effortless inhale and imagine sending that exhale out the lower legs. Sensing that exhale out the lower legs, feeling them relax and let go. Inhaling through the nose or feeling that inhale. And then exhaling out the thighs. Feeling those thighs grow heavy. Feeling the inhale through the nose and imagine sending that exhale down the spine, out the tailbone. That exhale flushing the spine from the top of the spine near the brain, all the way down to the tailbone. Letting that spine relax completely. Feeling the inhale through the nose. Feeling an exhale down both arms and out the fingertips. Feeling the inhale through the nose and feeling the exhale out the pit of the throat. The exhale relaxing one of the chakras, 
That's our center of speech, communication, relaxes the neck. Feeling your next inhale through the nostrils and imagining the exhale through the scalp. Sensing the body at ease on the mat. Becoming aware of the temperature in the room. Bringing awareness to sound in the room or lack of sound. Beginning to make subtle movements to gently wake the body, moving fingers and toes. Maybe opening the mouth wide in a yawn, a real one, or even a fake one, just stretching the face, resetting the brain. And if the legs are out long, Taking your time, uh, bending the knees. No rush. And then whenever you're ready, finding your way over to a comfortable fetal position, either side, whichever feels best. If you need to stretch, if you need to pull those knees into the chest before you roll over, whatever the body needs. But finding your way whenever you're ready to a fetal position. or not. And then taking the top hand and the bottom elbow and pressing yourself up with soft eyes to a comfortable seated position. I invite you um, to bring the hands together, the Anjali Mudra, and bring those fingertips to the forehead or the thumb tips, what I meant to say, to the forehead. May our thoughts be positive. You repeat to yourself, may my thoughts be positive. And then taking the thumb tips to the chin area. May my speech, may my words be kind and loving not only to others, but to myself. Those are the words, the thoughts in our brain. And then bringing those hands to the heart center, may my heart be fully open to receiving love and to giving love unconditionally. Namaste. Thank you for sharing my practice. I thank you for your presence. It's always a gift. Thank you, my virtual students. I know you're there in spirit. May you have a wonderful weekend ahead. <laughs>